What's your childhood mystery that you finally solved years later? One evening when camping, my brother caught a fish that we decided to keep alive in the cooler for some reason. Well, the next morning we ran out to see the fish and it had grown like five inches. We were so excited and didn't know how the fish grew that much overnight. Last year we brought it up and my dad said that he had gotten up in the morning and seen the fish being taken by a raccoon and that he'd spent the next hour or so frantically fishing for another one. He said he caught the new fish, the first one he was able to catch, just a few minutes before we got up. I had never questioned the fish growing that much as I grew up, but after hearing what really happened, I do feel like we probably should have wondered about that more. I visited my dad when I was six or seven years old at the place where he worked, or so I was told. I remember remarking at the time, and the people laughed at me because I said it looked just like a prison. The people laughing were the guards, and I was indeed visiting my dad at the Terminal Island Federal Correctional Institution, where he was a federal inmate. I solved a family mystery for my mom. I wasn't allowed to play console video games during the week all the way until I was 18, but some nights I'd really be craving it, so I would noiselessly creep through my house into the basement where I could play video games in peace. But once every 30 or so times, my parents would need something from the basement and I'd quickly turn off the TV monitor, hide in the guest room, and pray they didn't turn on a light or notice the Xbox was on. One night I ducked into the guest room and hid behind the bed. To my horror, my mom followed me into the room and turned on the lights. I was panicking, so when she started digging through the closet with her back to me, I made a run for it. I nearly brushed her shirt, and if she'd seen me, I'd probably given her a heart attack. But I made it, and kept going all the way to bed. About five years went by, and my mom said something like, You're such a quiet walker, and I told her it was because of my basement trips thinking I had nothing to lose. My mom's face went kind of solemn, and when I explained, she said, so there really was someone down there. And she explained that she remembered the exact night and the feeling that there was a ghost in the room. Over the next couple days, she'd stare into space and just say, I can't believe you were really there. She seemed to get over it, but she probably checks empty rooms closer now. My dad used to say he could stop the rain for a moment by snapping his fingers. He'd do it in the car when it was pouring. I was so mesmerized I told all my friends about it, well into late elementary school. I've since realized he'd snap as we drove underneath an overpass. I've always wanted to know what was behind the ATMs at a bank, how it worked, and where did the money come from. I grew up and worked at a bank just to find out some fat dude had to squeeze behind the ATMs to refill it. Me. Eventually we all grow up to be the fat dude that resolves our own mystery. I was watching Star Trek The Next Generation with my dad when someone told Riker to wash his back. When I asked my father why someone would say that, he said, so you can smell someone coming up behind you. It wasn't until years later that I understood how easy it was to hear watch as wash and how committed my dad was to willfully deceiving his children for personal satisfaction. My dad is an ex-Catholic, and every night when he'd tuck me in until I left the house, he'd say, we love you, God bless you, good night. And I was always wondering why, since he had stopped going to church long ago. Fast forward to me being 28 years old and watching an old Bruce Springsteen concert together, one of his favorite artists, and Bruce says, we love you, God bless you, good night, at the end of his set. I turned my head towards my dad and asked if this is why he said that for years to me at night. He laughed and said, I have no original material. When I was four, I vividly remember getting into my mom's car and her telling me that our cat had died. She told me how she rushed him to the vet and he was shedding fur. Something was seriously wrong. Despite her best efforts, he had died. I never knew why he died and why it happened so suddenly, but I accepted that it happened. Fast forward about 15 years, I'm home from college for Christmas. On Christmas Eve, I'm out driving to the store with my dad and my uncle. They are talking about the cat my parents got for Christmas one year, the cat mentioned above. My dad says, yeah, that thing was too aggressive, so I took it to a farm and gave it away. Normally when the family pet dies, the parents lie to the kid and say, it went to a farm upstate somewhere to ease the burden. Not my parents. They told me the horrifying truth, even though it wasn't, you know, true. Not mine, but my husband's. I hope he doesn't see this, because then my cover is blown. He said in middle school, there was a time that he'd get pulled out of class to shoot free throws in the gym. Only him. He didn't think it was strange, but didn't understand why he was the only one that got to do it. Turns out, his parents told his teachers he couldn't participate in sex ed. 
I remember there was a time where I had to start asking to go play in the backyard when I was about six or seven, maybe eight, with my sibling so she could supervise us. We never had to do this previously, so my siblings and I were very confused, and any time we didn't ask, she got us in big trouble. Turns out the neighbors were harboring a known p-file in their house, and that's why my mom got so upset with us going outside without asking. The Mystery of Zeus When I was very young, I very distinctly remember having a friend named Zeus. How could you forget someone with that amazing of a name? At some point, probably around third grade, he moved away and disappeared. I could never even find him in the yearbooks. It's like he never existed. My mother, the family, everyone kept telling me that I was imagining this kid. One day I'm telling my wife about my old best friend Zeus, the kid who vanished off the face of the earth and took every person's memory of him with him. I even showed her where he used to live when we drove by it, recounting the day that I went to his party and he had a great piñata. My wife stared at me for a moment and very slowly asked, Honey, did people yell for him a lot? Like, hey Zeus, come here. Well of course they did. How else would they get his attention? Hey Zeus, what's up? Hey Zeus, how are ya? Duh, that's a silly question. And he had a piñata? Yeah, why? Sweetie, I bet you his name was Jesus. Hey Zeus. Zeus. It was like being hit with a truck of realization. I asked my mother later, and yes, I did pal around with a kid named Jesus. It was one of the greatest mysteries of my life, one that made me question whether or not it was an imaginary friend, and it turned out to just me being a dumb as a rock kid. I used to go to our local YMCA after school, and during the summer when I was a kid, we went swimming in the pool almost every day, and being the curious kid I was, I always wondered what was behind the caution doors with the weird triangle markings. Fast forward eight years, and I'm now working at that YMCA as a lifeguard, and behind the doors, old, smelly pool chemical testing rooms. Very anticlimactic. Reverse of this. As a kid, my dad would call me from the other side of the house to bring him something to drink from the kitchen. He always drank from a straw, and about first grade, I started getting annoyed at this, so I started poking a tiny little hole in his straw as my own little vengeance. I didn't come clean about this until I was like 22 years old. The look on his face was priceless. It's like he instantly snapped back to then, and he knew exactly what I was talking about, and just said, Son of a bee! You did it, didn't you? He just thought we bought cheap straws. In kindergarten, I had a guinea pig that turned into many guinea pigs after I babysit the class guinea pig for Christmas break. Parents were thrilled. Anyway, my teacher took the entire family back to her house and was supposed to sell them, and I would get my original guinea pig back. They never returned, and my parents told me they all got sold together as one big, happy family. I didn't find out until I was maybe 25 that a coyote actually got into the cage, and they all got eaten together as one big, happy family. I had nightmares for years. Literally every dream I had was where my older sister was a robot and trying to kill me. She would come in the form of a tank. Things that looked like transformers, metallic spider, had a lot of knives and ish on her. Every single metallic robot you can imagine with my sister's face on it. Had only these dreams for all of elementary school. It was solved when I brought it up at 17. I was born super early. I mean super early. Four months. I was born with so many issues and complications. After I was born, I spent five months in the NICU, where I received a lot of attention from doctors, had multiple surgeries, and had a feeding tube put in me. My mom was sad that I couldn't meet my sister, and she couldn't meet me. She was four at the time, so she put a picture of my sister's face above me in my incubator thing so I could see my sister. Cute idea, but this ended up causing my brain to put together the only two things I knew. Surgical tools and scary hospital equipment with my sister's face. It took us so long to figure out what the H these nightmares meant. I figured out my dad wasn't on a business trip in 2005. He was at my uncle's wedding and didn't want to take me all the way there because it was in Ireland and he knew I'd want to go if he told me. In hindsight, I probably should have picked up on the lie. My dad is a school custodian. I wasn't a kid anymore, but some years back when my mom was terminally ill, my family was receiving food-based gifts from a lot of our friends. Prepped dinners, baked snacks, a restaurant gift card or two, the usual support friends extended when people they care about are going through tough times. For a long time, I remember dad asking me if I had tried any pastries we'd gotten from some family friends. We'll call them the Nelsons. I let him know they were a little dry but very tasty. 
and he chuckled. It stuck with me because it was an odd question and reaction. It wasn't until a couple years later, spacing out driving home, that I remembered my dad's bizarre reaction and the fact that the Nelsons had suggested easing some of mom's pain with marijuana, which they grew at home around the same period. I had eaten pot cookies. I felt like an idiot for not realizing it, and I don't remember anything that happened after I ate the pastries. When I was younger, like four or five, my family had a pet turtle. One day the turtle went missing and my parents told me it climbed the wall in our backyard and went to the creek behind our house. I, being a naive toddler child, did not question this logic. Fast forward to when I was 17 and driving with my mom in the car, we saw a tortoise crossing the street and I was suddenly thrown back to the memory of us having a pet turtle. I pulled over to save the tortoise and I was all, oh my god, mom, turtles can't climb walls. What happened to our turtle? Came to find out it had burrowed a hole in our lawn, and my dad didn't notice it until after he ran it over with the lawnmower. Obviously, it was easier to pick up the pieces and tell your kid it had climbed the wall than to admit you murdered it with a lawnmower. The entire time I lived in my childhood home, my mom hid my Christmas presents in her secret hiding place. She made it sound so mystical and mysterious. A few months ago, a while after I moved out, she finally told me what the secret hiding place actually was, the Christmas tree box in the cabinet in the garage. She would replace the Christmas tree with my presents when she put the tree up. My mother, who passed away in 2009, used to make meatloaf every single year on Groundhog's Day. Every single year. Every year she would tell us it was groundhog, and I always thought it tasted just like ground beef. But I was a kid. I'm 33 now. Last year. Last year. I said something to my brother about it, and asked if he knew where mom got the groundhog. I wanted to do that for my son. My brother had no idea what I was talking about. I told him about it, and he started laughing. My wife started laughing. My own son, who didn't know why, started laughing. Mom got me good. Mystery solved. It was just regular meatloaf. My father used to take us camping and on hikes and bike rides. He taught us about safety in the woods and on the water and how to navigate using maps. So it wasn't all that strange when he said one day, I was maybe 10, we were doing a game where we'd be blindfolded and taken on a drive. The object of the game was to call out what direction we were turning by feel, and then ultimately, after driving about 30 minutes, give a guess roughly where we were and which direction home was in. He was impressed by how well we did, and we took off the blindfolds and went for a hike. I never thought much about it. Years later, I realized why we played the game. My dad was in criminal psychology, especially sex offenders. He was kidnap-proofing us, but in a lighthearted way, so there was no fear or trauma. That the brown part of the bread doesn't contain nutrients. It's just the more cooked outer layer. My brother lied to me to get me to eat crust when I was a kid. I stepped on the scale when I was five, and I weighed 130 pounds. I couldn't believe how much I grew in one day. I spent the next two hours trying to convince my mom that I was a big boy by stepping on the scale over and over like 150 times. Not even exaggerating, I spent a stupid amount of time trying to repeat this. However, each time it came up like a hundred pounds shy. Years later, I definitely realized that my dad stepped hard on the scale behind me as a joke.